Great shot that one up. Yeah. Well, you saw the emotion. That's what it means to make it to the Challenge Cup final, be it Cardiff or Wembley, midsummer or spring. The occasion is the same. Challenge Cup final, it's Hull against Leeds, our commentators Jonathan Davis and Ray French. Thank you Steve, and Rugby League prides itself on being a family game, so every reason then why a husband and wife should lead out the finalists. Gary Hedrington, the Chief Executive of the Rhinos, and Kath in the chair at Hull. And if Leeds win well, I'm pretty sure she won't be giving Gary his tea for the next couple of weeks. A very knowledgeable uh, lady, certainly knows her game, and no nerves that either. In fact, she was more concerned uh, about her auntie Pat, who's having to watch this in the hospital. Lord Jack Ashley of Stoke, the uh, guest today, a big witness uh, supporter. He was really bemoaning the uh, relegation problem for uh, his club. A great uh, rugby league man, Danny Maguire, uh, that bad shoulder, will it last the 80 minutes, will he poach in two, without a head guard I notice at the moment, he's got a, a fractured uh, cheekbone. Jamie Jones Buchanan who's had such a good season to force his way into this Leeds Rhino side, Leeds in the traditional colours of uh, amber and uh, blue jerseys, Chris McKenna from, uh, and the little man. Rob Burrow, Gareth Ellis, who signed from Wakefield Trinity earlier in this season. Keith Senior and uh, Lord Ashley of Stoke, just having a word there. He knows his rugby. He was really questioning me last night about the fitness of uh, Keith Senior. And John Prescott, the MP for Hull, one of the guests here this afternoon. He no doubt be wishing Kath Edrington and John Keir every success. John Keir, who really has set his stall out. And the whole uh, masculine, an old friend of mine, Scott Walker, and his father, Terry. Qualified referee is young Scott. We meet up regularly on the rugby league circuit, and my word, he knows all about his rugby. And you can't ask him any questions about Hull, he knows the answers. Nathan Blacklock from uh, Australia, a grand final winner with uh, St George, but never in a Challenge Cup uh, final. Gareth Rayner. On the wing, wonderful atmosphere at this uh, Millennium Stadium. The last final will be here, of course, but what a part Wales and its players and its clubs have played in the history of this challenge. But Stephen Kearney in his last season for, uh, for Hull. Paul King suffered a lot of injuries, back to his best. Jamie Thackeray, watch his impact coming off that uh, off that bench. A smiling uh, John Prescott there. Does he know a thing or two about the the next 80 minutes that we we might not? And Steve Ganson, his first time in a in a Challenge Cup. Uh, he and Bill Ward's had so many successes with St Helens, of course, St Helens born lad, he couldn't uh, get a game. And we've got Ashley Klein, the reserve referee. Touch judges Phil Bentham and Steve Wright. Match Commissioner Ian McGregor from uh, Wigan. And all ready for the presentation party to return to the touchline of the crowd to be asked to stand for the national anthem.
see the action. Hull coach John Keir relies on the versatility of Motu Tony to take the place at fullback for Sean Briscoe, who so sadly was forced to undergo an operation for appendicitis yesterday. Half back, hooker, centre to fullback. The Kiwi International will not lack confidence, but how will he fare under the high kicks? That could be interesting. His New Zealand test teammate, skipper Richard Swain, will, however, be hoping to inspire the whole forward for the same sort of performance they put in against St. Hannah's in that semi final. That performance will be the key to the outcome of this game. Leeds boss Tony Smith told Claire Balling that there hadn't been a doubt about Keith Senior's fitness. Well, at 6 foot 3, 16 stone, and with 25 near tries already to his name this season, a fit senior, he'll be a major asset. But will that ankle last 80 minutes? One man who will relish the occasion after suffering a serious cruciate knee ligament injury is hooker Matt Diskin. Only his eighth appearance of the year, but he can cause a lot of damage to Hull at the play of the ball. Gamson ready for the kickoff. Great occasion for him too. His first uh, ever final, and I must say, uh, Jonathan, Steve Gamson, a very strict referee, not afraid to send people okay, to the sin bin or even give the red card. No, let's hope he uh, you know, hasn't got a big part to play in this game. It'd be a, an open, attractive game. Ready, guys. Leeds underway then. The Power Gen Challenge Cup final for 2005. Hull in the right, white jerseys, the uh, irregular oh, black oh, and white oh, uh, hoops. Second, that's good. And Hull, those similar tactics that uh, we saw in the semi final, driving it away yeah, from the you. first right, receiver right. in their own half. Simple, steady rugby. Four, back it up, Leeds. Good set. Richard Horn, key role here yards. today. And again, seeking to turn the speedy back three. That's a good kick. Oh. Terrific kick, Jonathan. Yeah, great first set. You know, the forward just drove it up. Maybe the, the last try there, Second. they took it uh, a little bit back too up, deep. Boys. But a superb kick from Horn, and again, the chase as in the semi-final was very, very quick. Third. Richard, hold, 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 boys. Hull beating all Super League talent to get to this final, Wakefield, Bradford, Lee and St Helen. But this is where they'll try and keep them, they'll try and keep the Leeds side deep in their own half. And maybe because they are the best at uh, offloading in the tackle, they will try and do that deep in their own half. And four, and it'd be four set and four set errors. And not a bad kick either from, oh. uh, from Leeds. First. And I, I saw Back that, up, you know, Blacklock was uh, training at full back yesterday. It'd be very interesting. That's what he was. Second, now again, Kev. To take the first Don't kick, Blacklock saw. So we'll see if he goes back into that position. Leeds driving in. Good burst there from. Uh, Gareth Carvel, one of the few players from the Stanley Amateurs uh, club in this uh, in this game. And it does look that Blacklock is going to play full back. He's in yeah. centre position there. I'm sure that they will put a few high balls up for him. Question is defensive qualities, but there is no doubt about his attacking abilities. Superb try scorer. Another kick to the corner from Richard Hall. This time a little bit too much uh, force on it, but at least it keeps. Uh, Leeds well pen down in that Jay. 20 meter area. And oh, there we see down. Blacklock. Well, Good a tactical start, switch. We all thought Motu Tony was going to be in at the, uh, the full back row, but no. There is Diskin, number First nine, at the, uh, at the play of the ball, acting half back. Sinfield. As uh, 
Ian Millward was saying earlier in the studio, just look for the offloads, the player standing up, turning his back and just slipping that ball to someone in support. Reeves and Masters. Terrific high kick now, though. Black looks not there. Steve Wright with the red flag at the corner on the spot. Right, so come on. I don't think I don't think he's seen it as 100 percent fit. There's no doubt. I saw him chasing that kick. And let's watch if he's limping there. The ball head. How long will he last? Maybe the risk was taken purely because Gareth Ellis, the loose forward, can play in the centre. Oh, I think you're a bit harsh on him there. He, he was uh, not only that, when he lost that ball, I've been watching him chasing that kick, he hasn't got the same commitment as he usually shows. He's a world-class player, and maybe that is just playing on his mind. You just watch oh, him. It'll, it'll be on his mind if you've got an injury. It's there all the time, isn't it? We'll see three players in the lead side carrying injuries. Hull driving forward. Richie Mathers again being tested. Not a great kick there, Ray. That's the this third time, kick. Yeah, That's this the third time. kick in four, mi four minutes, Jonathan. Danny Bruff, they've got a, okay, Danny. a very good Go kicking team there. Bruff, Horn, Cook can also come in and do it. Danny Bruff, two years ago, playing with the York City Knights in the National League Division 2. Now showing his worth. Try and get a mismatch, come up against a big forward. And again, a little bit too much uh, weight on the kick from uh, Kevin Sinfield. Okay. There's a tackle on Senior. And if you are a house side, if there are any question marks over Keith Senior's ankle, you run at him. All the players should be going down that side and take him on. And also, I think one or two of the forwards should be running at Danny Maguire and testing that shoulder out, won't they? Here are the whole forwards, testing out now. Don't get caught in. When he comes on, Ray. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when he comes on. <laughs> Richard Hall, nice movement there. Got, Kirk, got Stephen Kearney on the run, just that little couple of uh, metres to the right just brought the momentum from uh, Kearney. Yes. Paul Cook, a huge towering kick, well taken. Richie Mathers, former uh, England schools uh, player. Good tactic, and just we'll we'll a again, little ball. bit too far, and plenty of time to take it, well taken. He's played Sir really Kevin well since the start the, of the game, Richard Mathers. These kicks, again, as with St Helens in the semi-final, not allowing Leeds to play this sort of natural running game. They're having to bring the ball away all the time, aren't they, from their own line? It's a big territorial it's game for Hull. Taken. Well taken by Gareth Rayner. And of course taken in the in goal area, so it's up on the 20 metre line. Richard Swain. That man of it, nice offload. Second, come on, that's an effort. Richard Horn. And Carvel doing a lot of work early on. Former uh, Leads uh, Rhino's player. Stephen Kearney just oh. couldn't get the ball away. Third. Come on. But this big uh, whole pack causing a lot of problems. Cook. Just a little bit too far. Yeah, in goal. 
but it certainly put the pressure on this Leeds Rhino side. Yeah, they had That's numbers on the left-hand side. He just put a little bit too much on that kick. There was a little bit of um, blocking there, but he was going to get it. Leeds trying to gather their composure. They're known Third. as a very open uh, playing sort of side. They've already smashed the Super League record this season with the... Uh, 196 tries, this is what they like to do, keep it on the move. Sinfield, Burrow again. McKenna, nice inside. Good tackle. Four. They just want to Four. move Four. the ball Four. around Four. a little Four. bit, that's what they want to do, move the ball around a bit, you know, get the forwards, the hull, hull forwards out of their defensive position. Sinfield, looking for that one-handed pass, gets it to Ward. Good break by Ward, just needed a half-back on his left-hand side. Oh, no. Numbers on the left-hand side, numbers on the left. Sinfield, tried the kick, well taken. Great, great take by, by Blacklock. The bounce favoured him, but he had to be brave. And uh, we've got our touchline reporters down there. Uh, Richard, what news down there in this early stage? Ray, there's some concern on the Rhinos bench about the Leeds fullback Richard Mathers. He, he took a fairly heavy blow a few minutes ago. The physio was on to talk to him. He looks okay, his head's clear. Uh, he's just a bit dehydrated, actually. Uh, the dehydration may be something to do with nerves, you never know. Five and again. You never know. Well, the sun has been out uh, all morning here in uh, Cardi, but it's cloudy oh, overhead it. now, but it is warm and humid down there. I'd be quite surprised if he's dehydrated after nine minutes. I know he's had a lot of work to do, but um, it's just a, a bit of a, a nervous, nervous start, a lot of energy used up. And there again, we see a family game. <laughs> and she's recognised herself. First. Richard Swain, come on. Nisky. McKenna moving down his favourite to right side. Come on, boys, Danny. Come on, good effort, Richard. Gareth Ellis leads only major purchase this year oh, from the uh, Wakefield Trinity Wildcats. Good, Stephen, that's fine. Chev Walker, Sinfield. Not the biggest of players, but very difficult to pull down. Here's one, certainly not the biggest of players. Rob Burrow moving nicely. Diskin. Burrow again. Good number one to see you. Terrific tackle. Good. Marcus Bide and Papua New Guinea wing man rides it. Great play there by Whiting. Sinfield again. Oh, two of them have gone for it. There's a try on the kick. It's a nice thing if he penalty try. That should be a penalty try. And that is no, the first mistake. This, this is a huge decision. Getting to the ball. Now then, issues grounding. I could have possibly been held back here, prevented from getting to the ball. I but think, I think he's held also. back. Right. The first thing is the offside. I had a but call on the Chef call Ward. has got to come from Blacklock. There's Blacklock. There's Reina. He should have been taken. Watch him. He's held back. That is a penalty try. Don't have to look at nothing else. Doesn't have to Big look. Decision, but one of the problems as well, the two of them went up with the ball. Nobody seemed to call. Yes, he is held back there. He's interfered with. It's a penalty try. He didn't touch it though. He's got to be the penalty try. Video referee, a man of considerable experience, Robert Connolly. There's no doubt he's being held back, right? If he is onside, that is a penalty try. There's well, no question of doubt. He's got to give it. The ruling for a penalty try is if, in the referee's opinion, a try would have been scored. Let's it's see. It's not might have been, it's not could have been, it would have been scored. It's got to be definite, Jonathan. He's onside. Well, if that isn't definite, Ray, what is? I'm not arguing with you, I'm just giving you the ruling. You've been arguing with me. To me, it looks a try, he's held back. The mistake was made when there was not a call. There's got to be a clear call.
maybe there was, but it's got to be straight away. Looks to me as if it will be a penalty try. Yes, it is. So the Leeds fans absolutely delighted by uh, Robert Connolly, the video referee's uh, decision. And Mark Connolly, the scorer. The first try in the power to And I'm sure that uh, Ian Millward in the studio with many interested in this because Mark Connolly, of course, joining Wigan. Next year, and here's a suitable ploy for Ian to use. Well, that was the first test of the fullback, Blacklock, and the call had to come in. No one, well, doesn't seem to be a call there, and that is a penalty try without the shot of a doubt. He does well to get back, but the damage is done. I think uh, referee Steve Ganson having a good word uh, with Collingwood. He says, I don't want you coming across and telling me what to award or not award. Ray, there's 74,000 people here. It's a Challenge Cup final. The guy is held back under the post. Of course, his emotions are going to take over, and he is going to shout at the referee. Okay, great for Ganson to say that, but in the emotion of the game, got to do it. And of course, a penalty try, the goal always taken from underneath the post. Kevin Sinfield then. That's the conversion. So, in controversial circumstances, Calderwood, the try scorer. Leeds fans delighted. Six points to nil in the lead. Again, the up and under, he's onside. Really good. It's very difficult because the guy coming onto the ball should make the call. But both players are running onto the ball. There's Calderwood's reaction. He seems to be saying, excuse me, Mr Ganson, is that a try? Yes. Or words to that effect. Back is by. Another player looking for a Challenge Cup winner's medal here this afternoon, but uh, expected to be leaving Leeds at the end of the season. And Keith Senior taking three men to pull him down. Good tackling there from Richard Whiting. Richard Whiting! Oh! Well, Good. Carvel going in right. quite strongly there. Danny, on with the job! On with it! Come on! Rob Burrow. McKenna. Foul! Come on, all, we're going well. Come on, all the way. Well done. Gareth Ellis going to the uh, to play the ball a lot, Jonathan. Not seen that really far back from him uh, with Leeds. No. Sinfield. But this could have just sold the position there, but. First! Well done, Gareth Ellis. Uh, well done, Leeds. We've got Ian Millward, of course, in the, the studio. Any comments so far, Ian? Well, you've got to say, well both done. teams' Come kicking on, game's been outstanding, and uh, they've got a try over that leads with an attacking kick. But I thought Hull's kicking game's been keep very, going, very Kev, good. Keep, they've Come really on. dominated field position because of a very good kicking game, and they've just got to continue that. Look, that, that, that try, it shouldn't dent their confidence. What they're doing is fine. The only thing is, beware of Leeds' attack. At the moment, they look very skillful and sharp. Yeah, they do look, they do look very skillful, and the one thing... The Hull defence are playing a very tight defence, and the Leeds, are, with a little run around, are trying to get on the outside of them. Second. Kevin... Uh, he's seen it, rather, still looking sure and sound on that foot, as there is uh, Ali Lawatiti from the New Zealand uh, Warriors, and it's uh, Leeds' uh, turn now to show that they've got a pack of some metal. This game, Burrow. The fifth tackle. Steve Keenan, get him back that side, we Again, good uh, shooting at the bounce. Uh, yeah. Now we're here. Nathan Blacklock. Second, come on, Danny. No, it's quick. Leads of. Uh, Got to keep hold down in this half because uh, Hull really, all right, 
Jonathan. They've kicked very well, but they've not had a chance to put pressure on with ball in hand in the Leeds 20 metre earlier. No, none yet, and I'm quite surprised, like we said, that I would certainly test Keith Senior's ankle out. I would have Keeney running at him, I would have Blacklock coming on the shoulder of somebody just trying to make him change his angles and change position. A ricochet could be picked up by uh, Kearney. Yes, it is, it's back to one. Now then, a chance for Hull to have some pressure with ball in hand here. Yeah, they need to pick their tempo up a little bit. This is a guy that can do it. Swain. Good movement here now. That's Mallers. Uh, and Brough uh, playing up. No need for that. Here is Cook. Reina. Good battle between Collingwood and Rayner, former teammates at uh, Leeds a few years ago in the uh, academy, another 21 sides. Ten metres then now, here is Swain, good driving burst, cutting it over, no he can't, good tackle there from, from Ward. Swain again, Bruff, I think a chip kick! Marcus Bly just managed to read the bounce of that ball. But, uh, well played Marcus Bly. Yeah. Richard Whiting was coming in, he's six foot three. I thought he might get around him, Jonathan. But look at the that's fairly good play. He knew the the bone read the bounce of the ball and the power of the kick. But in that position, you've got to send Dummy Run nose down, Keith Senior's channel. We've got to make him play and change position and be late on his feet. Robert to pass a message down for you. Ewan Dowles. Still holding on the attack. Richard Swain, the skipper, commanding around the play of the ball. Carvel. Swain again. Hall. Cook. That's a good ball. And Kirk Yeaman, the former. Mighton Jr. He ran on that well. Swain. Nathan Blacklock coming in for. Bit of action in midfield. Still hold on the attack. Kearney. Nice slippy side. Bro, here's a chance. Can he get the ball down? No, he can't. Well played. Lower TT. Oh. Got his legs underneath oh, one. Knows. Jamie Jones Buchanan. Wonderful tackle there. But it's still hold. The kick to the corner. Walker's underneath it. Checks it beautifully. Sorry, Collier. And there are some brutal tackles going in here. Two and three at a time. We just saw the, that tackle from Jamie Jones Buchanan, the replacement who's just come on for Ward. And what a timely replacement. That looked a trial. Here's the hard tackle, there's Jones, there's Lewatiti with his feet underneath. <laughs> Desperate defence. And a big smile from Ali Lewatiti too. Who's head and ball there? Bruff. Packing down at the, the loose forward uh, row. A lot of uh, multi purpose players in this uh, whole side. Kearney. Strong running Kiwi second row. Goes back down under at the end of this uh, season. 44 Great Britain uh, caps. This possession, uh, New Zealand right. caps. A, lo a lot of that possession has been in their own half. Exactly the same start. <laughs> Bruff. Cook again. Nice dummy. Nice offload. But uh, just check a note of uh, Leeds. The sliding defence covering across field. Two men for every player. That's good. They can kick over the top. Here's a chance. He scored. He can score.
first of all, it's McMenemy who puts the kicker, which is unusual for, for Hull. Great skill by Whiting, and again by Tony, fantastic. There's the first kick, unusual to see him kick. But watch this skill, watch the skill, he goes up, can't collect it, flips it back, and what a lovely chip. Bravery takes the ball, watch this hit. Mathers is in, superb try by Tony. This is the advantage of having what? a six foot three centre, Jonathan. And again, it's Keith Senior. You know, I don't want to harp on him for this, but he did not get into the air. That's a Tony playing in a lot of positions here with this whole uh, side. We all expected him to be in the full back role, pops up on the wing. Great, great skill, though, wasn't it? First by Richard Whiting. Then by Motto Tony. Danny Broth. Swings it in. Oh, it's a beauty. Superb effort for the 22 year old coming off City Life Square. Just watch this. Watch the skill by Whiting. He goes up, number 30, flicks it on. Oh, what a lovely chip. The bounce is favourable. That's a lovely chip. Takes a great hit. Throws the ball on the line, first of all. Try. He, he almost ricochets off Ali Lawatiti, doesn't I he? I think he did. Kevin uh, Sinfield just uh, taking his uh, time. Uh, covered in blood, too. He's had to have that uh, staunch. And uh, Brian Carney down there. Well, Ray, it's noticeable. What a great try, but... Hull, uh, Hull have increased the intensity in their running very, very soon after the uh, Leeds try, and that, that try that Hull have just got is a just reward for that increase. Watch for Paul King running hard into this Leeds defence. There's, there's a noticeable change in the attitude of these Hull players. And he's just got that ball over the line. Yeah, I did feel, you know, after about 15 minutes, Hull were looking very, very tired, and sometimes the occasion does get to you, and you're looking for your second wind. I just feel that that just has come now with uh, with Hull. But it's good tackling there from uh, Leeds, just uh, contained Hull to only 12 metres in the first uh, three tackles. Paul King on now, Great Britain forward. There he is, on the charge. They don't do anything fancy within 30, 40 metres of their own line. Then Richard Horn or Paul Cook are usually on hand for one of these long testing kicks. Mathers certainly earning his bonus this afternoon. Another great kick. And another great chase. Just look at those men though. Cook, Kearney, Swain. As a result, you end up with play five metres from your line if you're a Leeds player. Jamie Jones Buchanan still can't get out of that 20 metre earlier. Leeds already the holders last season of the, the grand final and the World Club champions looking for a treble here this afternoon in Cardiff. The 20th final. Challenge Cup final, John, but for many, many a year. The reason for that is really because the defensive work on both sides have been so good. There have been very, very few breaks, so they've got a kick from deep. Rough. Hull just using the uh, wingmen and uh, occasionally the full back to make them a bit more room. King, Swain, this whole pack got some momentum now. Oh, oh. Well inter intercepted there, and a timely interception too by Ali Lawatiti. That could have been a try. There's the pass, Lawatiti the interception. Second. End to end rugby now. S senior. I feel, I, I feel like Keith Senior is. Diskin. 
be in, you know, a passenger at the moment. Can't afford that in the final, I'm telling you. They are surely not gone. Well, now they should that have been play on. But the ball is, is knocked down. Let's have a look. No, definitely a knock on. He played the hand and, and Sinfield knocked it on. Oh, I'm not so sure. Not just so watch sure. it, just watch it here. Plays the hand, comes off Sinfield. Knock yeah. on. Only 10 metres. He's back in his quiz, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> OK, back side, back line, south. First shot. Centre player there from Kirk Yeaman. Swain. We said we would see this man around the play the ball earlier. First off, receiver, all acting half back. Oh, a little bit chancing. That was a Playoff, ball. says referee Ganson. Certainly forward and touch judge Phil Bentham got that wrong. Horn again. Holderwood to retrieve. <laughs> Chester got to him, didn't he? Chris Chester coming on for Stephen uh, Keenan. And this is where the half forward really put some effort in. This is where, at the moment, Hull are containing leads. A clamp being put on that free-flowing style of the Leeds Rhino. Dunaman. Cook working hard. Dunaman again. Bailey. Keep an eye out for that man, number 17, Chris Chester. He's a good ball player. Bruff. Thackeray as an interchange player has certainly made a fantastic impact on every game I've seen this year. There he is, number 15, former Castleford Tigers uh, prop. Swain again. Hull driving forward with this pack here, the on the left hand side. It's a chase, Kurt Yeaman's going for it. Safety. With those whole fans there on the side, no, what might have been? Superb play by by her lovely kick. But in Calderwood's positioning is excellent as well. Would you have kicked this, Jonathan, or would you have passed it? Personally, I wouldn't have kicked because there's no. an overlap there. Look, there's three, three to one. I would have given it. I would. Kept the ball in hand. But the, the tactic is to have play a good kicking game. It seems to be effective. John uh, Keir there, just uh, reaching for his uh, walkie-talkie, but uh, quite content at the moment, no need to send any instructions down. A master at preparing sides for the Challenge Cup, assistant coach with Castleford and Wigan when they won the trophy, and also, of course, in charge with Sheffield Eagles. Again. First. Enemy offloads to Bruff. Good switch down the right hand side here. That was good play, good play there by number 30, Richard uh, Whiting. Swain. King driving forward. Set the six this. Don't think they'll score close in, they've got to move it, I feel. Here is Cook. 
Just looks as if he loses control on that ball. There doesn't seem to be the downward pressure there, uh, Jonathan. No, I think, I think, I think yep. he's lost the target. And by the reaction, it's a, it doesn't seem to make the line, does it? The, the, and also, Jonathan, it's not a rip out of the ball in a two-man tackle because uh, Rob Burrow hasn't actually got to the tackle by the time the uh, no. the action is done. I, th I think that. Kirk Yeaman's reaction says it all. But now it's interesting to see what Robert Connolly will say. Is it a knock-on? Is it a defensive scrum? Is it an attacking scrum? That's the, that's the key decision. I think it'll be a knock-on. I would say it'll be a defensive scrum. There you are. That was a great tackle. Good effort, though, from... Uh, Kurt Yeaman, he went for it, he dug down, but as Jonathan said, tremendous defence actually on this right wing from Calderwood and Walker on three or four occasions. Tony Smith, his first uh, Challenge Cup final, came to watch his brother when uh, his elder brother Brian was in charge of uh, Bradford in the 90s. Loses the ball. Now Atiti has to go back and take it. Has to get over that line. And Leeds are all at sea at the moment. This relentless tackling from Hull, really testing them. Packery again. Loses the ball. They want to set the list down. Mistakes. Duneman. And I think it was interesting there, Jonathan, to see Duneman. He didn't quite know what to do with this ball. This whole side are coming up so quickly. The tackling so fierce. Uh, Defence has been very, very good. Hull just. Twice winners of the Challenge Cup, last occasion way back in 1982. Calderwood. Leeds have withstood all the pressure. Can they bounce back now in this uh, final seven or eight minutes? Duneman. Burrow. Yeah, I just. You haven't seen, you know, the darting runs of Burrows or Maguire because the Leeds forwards have really been con contained okay, okay. by the Hull boys. Okay. And again, good reading at full back here. Oh, and here's a chance now. They can he go all the way? No, he can't. <laughs> Blacklock just so not trusting to his pace out wide, but covering by Sinfield. Again, oh, that's some tackle. Oh, tackle. Terrific oh, tackle by Ward. King, it's hard, it's bruising in the middle there. I'm sure Jonathan will have quite a few points in the second half. They can't keep this intensity up in the middle. Uh, it's like a ward of attrition. Nine's off, fifteen's off. Everybody else okay. Mathers again. How many times has he had to go behind his own line to retrieve that ball? And how many times has 
that man been the perpetrator Richard Horn they just can't get away can these rhinos Chev Walker Interesting that uh, Barry McDermott, the old war horse, wasn't selected for this match. I just think a run or two from him at the moment would inspire this lead side. Well, I was a bit surprised, you know, he's a big game player, and I would have certainly picked him in my squad. Again, watch, two minutes. this is the offload. Great hands by Senior. Marcus Pye wasn't two aware minutes, of that. Boys. Give, take, Does superb. It? Marcus Pye just wasn't ready for it. Six minutes left in this first half, six points apiece. Okay, Back Robin, Kevin! Cook takes up the loose forward roll now. To Whiting, and they're gaining more and more Bruff. confidence, these uh, full players. Bruff, Richard Horn. He's offside, he's offside. He's offside. He's checking his first instinct, Mr. Gansons, was that he was offside. He's Myers offside, look. He's Myers offside. Yeah, yeah. Didn't even go to the, to the screen, Ganson knew straight away. Offside, I think, Jonathan. Well, that's clever play again. The Blacklock, who's been operating in the fullback role, had switched to the wing for that particular movement. Yep. Yep, he did. He did. Mr. Ganser's first instinct was to give the penalty, Jonathan. Then he had a, had a rethink and thought, well, I'd better check the screen. But he saw it straight away. It's good yeah. refereeing. Okay, right. Well, this is the problem with the video referee, isn't it? You've got okay. that sort of hanging at the back of you all the time. Hull interchanging this uh, set of forwards. One man, big man goes off, and uh, another comes on. Duneman. I think the other aspect to notice, Jonathan, about this uh, Leeds uh, play is that they are getting very, very slow play the balls. There's no real momentum or speed occurring there. Shane. Willie Poaching there, number 16, with the head guard on. He uh, suffered a fractured cheekbone a couple of weeks ago on the fifth tackle. Sinfield, okay. again the kick charged down. Back to work. Play on, another six tackles. Good play by Sinfield there. Big set of six coming now up then, now. A chance for Leeds, less than four minutes remaining in this first half. He's a little bit of magic from Maguire. Pulci, Duneman, Wall. Big forward, and last something for the Rhinos fans to cheer. The ball on wide to Nawatiti. Five metres from the whole line. Sinfield. Mathers. Oh, Mathers going for the corner. Just held up. Almost fooled that set. The whole defence. They can ship over the top. Should be taken easily. Well, I think uh, Andrew Duneman and uh, Jules Buchanan were a little confused there because he was straddling the try line, wasn't he? Yeah, foot in the third in goal area. Top on a 20. Yeah, but of course, the foot in the in goal area means that it is a tap on the 20 metre line. Very clever play there. Play on 
said the referee. Just over two minutes remaining, terrific burst by Willie Porty. Leeds now looking to go with the lead. Rob Burrow weaving, darting. Four tacklers remaining in this sequence. Juniman again. Porty took his eye off the ball. Really pushing in some difficulty you, there with that uh, fractured cheekbone. Well, it wasn't a great pass. Demon spotted it and just came in and took the, took the man. It's a great spot. The defensive play by Yeaman. So much for kick and chase, Phil. Just uh, an injury down there to. Chef Walker made his debut as a 16 year old. I don't know when he made his debut, certainly not at 16. Rainer. Hall will surely just want to hold on to this ball, they'll be content with a, a six all draw at half time. Or will they? They're moving well down the middle with Carvel again. Richard Swain. Senior in the tackling well. Packery. Is it worth a drop goal, Jonathan, just to give a lead to a side? Is that to go? No, he's not. Putting a high kick from Brough. Well taken. It's a baby taken. He really has uh, covered the ball well, though, this afternoon, as uh, Mathers. Into the final minute. Second! Back here, lad. Uniman. Third! Rebound! Poaching. Four! Back work, 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 work. Come on. And also Five. flat, they also flat outside Sinfield. He's looking for the pass, yeah. but it's, he can't. He can't spot anywhere. Inside, inside, forty. Good kick from Andrew Dunaman, putting the pressure on Nathan Black. Oh, he only has to hold this ball. The hooter will go. And uh, throw at them. Hold about two tries disallowed by the video referee Mark Germans in the 29th minute, Blacklocks in the 34th. But it's been an interesting match. Well, I think that uh, John Keane will be the happiest uh, camp purely because I think the game has gone their way. They've dominated uh, the four exchanges, the kicking game has been good, and they've nullified the leads, you know, offload and break. So, more of, more of it in the second half for, for Hull, at least we want to break, up, break the game up a little bit more. And just for some thoughts on that first half, I think uh, Richard uh, has uh, Barry McDermott down there. Yes, Ray. Uh, Barry, do you think that the Rhinos will count themselves fortunate to go in at half-time level? I think it's a pretty even game, isn't it? Um, I think we'll be pretty positive in the changing rooms and, and just regather ourselves. All are playing really, really well, and uh, to be still drawing at half-time after the the opportunities that we've got, I think, will uh, will count ourselves lucky. Give me a view of the second half. Can Hull sustain that intensity, or have the Rhinos got something up the sleeve? Uh, it's a bit of a war of attrition at the minute. I think we're, we're playing the chess game. Hull's kicking game is fantastic. They keep penning us down in our in our red zone, and uh, it's it's who loses patience first, I think. We'll see. Thanks, Barry. Thank you. Good first half though, barely 12 minutes gone and referee Steve Ganson, helped by the video ref, gets the first tough decision after confusion, the evidence made it straightforward. Calderwood held back, penalty try, leads ahead after an assured start by Hull. And Hull coming desperately close through Richard Horn, only improvised defending by Lower Titi, kept him out. After McMenemy's kick was touched on by Whiting, the bravery of Moto Tony brought its reward for Hull. Six points apiece. More brilliant Lees defending required from Chev Walker to deny Kirk Yeoman when he seems certain to score. 
Hull are stronger, and maybe we're getting the classic final that we'd hoped for. Six points apiece, studio analysis in a moment, but first from the touchline, Brian Carney with Claire. Well, it's amazing watching the pitch at ground level, how much you see and how much you see if you're sitting next to Brian Carney and he tells you what to look for. Because you said to me, within about 30 seconds, Keith Senior's lame. Well, we saw when he chased, he, ch he chased the initial kickoff and he was doing it with a limp. However, he's a very, very tough man and he's lasted 40 minutes in probably one of the hardest games he's ever likely to play and he's come through it OK. If he doesn't seize up at half time, you know, he could come out and make an impact for Leeds in the second half. Which of the two sides do you think will now be sitting there at half time thinking, yeah, we could win this? Well, I think Hull will be very encouraged by the fact that they came so close to scoring tries. You know, that's, that's nice to think that you can get up there and score. And I think Richard Horn has found the ground with almost every one of his kicks, which has caused Leeds difficulty because they've got to return it from back there instead of over here in the middle of the field. Now, as far as Hull are concerned then, who are going to be the key men in this second half when everyone starts getting a little bit tired? Well, Richard Horn, yeah. but likewise, Leeds have got Danny Maguire who can exploit tired defences. Rob Burrow's the very same, so I'd be looking out for those little nippy men now. But if you had 50 quid in your pocket now and could have a bet, which side? I put it on hold before the game. OK, that's the view. Uh, you did already. Well, he might be a rich man at the end of it. You never know. Let's Thanks, Brian. Clear balling straight from Royal Ascot and Glorious Goodwood has Keith Senior as looking a little lame, but who's going to get the trip in this one? It's uh, looking like Hull at the moment. Great first half. Well, it's a war of attrition at the moment, isn't it? It's uh, kicking games vital so much at the moment, and you've got to applaud Hull. They're winning the battle there, both tries from kicks. But I felt uh, they've been very, very good to their go forward. We predicted before the game that they go forward. The big men for Hull have been really, really good, and they've had to do a lot of work leads. And it'll be interesting to see uh, how they respond because this game reminds me so much of the semi final yeah. between St Helens and Hull. I feel like it's deja vu, and they, their kicking game was the outstanding that day. They're doing all the little things right. You know, they're getting to a kick, they're finding space, they're, not give, they're very disciplined, they're not giving away penalties. So all the little things are right, and they're getting them back on the inside in uh, defence uh, when they're exploiting their inside defence at Leeds. So at the moment, John Keir, he's one happy man at the moment. Yeah, Leeds are right to be concerned, but would Hull be equally concerned that they haven't had more reward for the pressure of, uh, they, they imposed in that first half? I think you've got to be careful with the Leeds team, with the speed that they have on the flanks and, and the broken ru field runners that they've got, is that you're open to the counter-punch. We saw a period for maybe five, ten minutes when Hull were pounding the Leeds line, and then all of a sudden at the other end they get a couple of calls and it looked like Leeds were going to get a score. So that's the big danger for Hull. Can they maintain that intensity? I'm not too sure, because both teams are tired out there. Hull will have the more enthusiasm because of what they've done with the ball, I think. King and Carvel and Thackeray have had some massive lift and some huge go forward and given their, their pivots to, uh, the ability to play off the front foot and kick off the front foot. Leeds have got a little, little bit of ball go nice, stay patient, but they generally do that in the second half of games, Leeds. But there's no doubt about it, they're in a huge arm wrestle here and you'd have to say Hull would go in with the more enthusiastic. And they started confidently, didn't they? It was a good first ten minutes, but then confusion under the high ball led to that penalty try, of which there was really no doubt, Brian. Well, he's onside, that's for sure. And uh, we were looking at, at Calderwood Davies on the inside. Had he gone to Walker, who stayed out the frame, he would have been offside. So everybody's onside. And then we just get no communication between the fullback and the winger. I think this is the winger's ball, him. Well, they're just going to collide into each other. It gives Calderwood the opportunity. And there's no doubt that it's an a, a infringement from, um, I don't know which I think it's uh, Motu Tony. Or oh, tries to, or Gareth Rayner tries to. Tries to haul him back down. And that's a penalty try. That's a fair call by the referee. But they're just not talking. For me, that's number five's catch. He was coming forward towards the ball and should have made it. Are they not talking? Was it the lack of a call or maybe the sound within the Millennium Stadium here? It causes its own problems, doesn't it? Well, I think make excuses. Yeah, I think we talked about it during the game uh, and pre-match we did. It was the noise in the stadium. 75,000 people in here. It's very hard. Look, all their focus is on the ball in the air and they, and they think whoever's coming towards is an opposition player. They've both challenged each other. Unfortunately, they got it wrong. And, and a ground where there's not as many people, yeah, they get it right. But that's the pressure of a final. It was a big blow, but the kicking game was working well for Hull, uh, and only some desperate defence denied them in the next 20 minutes or so. Well, this was sustained pressure, and it would come through great field position, turning the back, ball back on the inside again, and here Horn, you think he's going to score, but have a go at the legs of Ali Latiti. Hey, but that's not in the textbook, <laughs> that one. And have a look at the smile now. Oh, the he smile loves that there, one. He says, I've outdone you there. I've got the ace in my hand. But uh, their kicking game was the outstanding. And here, once again, we're showing this here. It's their ability to turn the ball back on the inside, their ability to come up with a very attacking kicking game has given them field position and a chance 
the play a little bit back on the inside like we were speaking there before. But, um, you know, at the moment, you know, I like the way Cook's playing over on the left-hand side. On that side, he's creating a lot of opportunities. They may have scored, should have scored a couple more tries. They've had space. And they probably haven't done well with it, which is reflected in the, in the human disallowed try. But that left-hand side is the side they like to go to with Cook, and that's the side they beat St Helens in the semi-final and they're having great success here again today. But it was McManamy's kick that set up the try that levelled things uh, for Hull. Great courage here from Motu Tony as well. I just think that's a speculator. He's got to last place and just shoots it as high as he can. Whiting's out, jumps somebody, and this is the individual skiller, that's a great kick from Motu Tony. Beats his player one-on-one -on -one and shows great bravery to get into the corner on his own. Here you go, that's a speculator. Keith, is his ankle allowing him to jump as high as he'd like to? But to take by on one-on-one, -on -one, he knows he's not going to get through him, so I'll go over the top of him. And the kick and the regather is super, super skill. But other opportunities came their way. Paul Cook may be also a, a little guilty of ignoring a potential overlap here, but great defending uh, once again from... Uh, from Leeds. Yeah, you know, I think the most important thing there, creating opportunities and have a look where they are. They're only 10, 20 yards from the line. That's field position. That's created with this kicking game. Caldwell gets there because of his speed. He's the quickest man in rugby league besides Darren Albert. Here again, very subtle, astute kicking game in behind, creating pressure. Got to come up with the right play, Calderwood. And this is where they're applying pressure. And you know what also it does? Not only does it apply pressure, it reduces your energy levels. You've got to do more work, you've got to do more defence. And then, when you want to attack, they're a very good team leads in attack, but how, will they have the energy? Because, you know, at the moment, on a, on a scale of uh, 1 to 10, they're getting everything right whole. The, the key we said it here in the semi-final, we sat there that day and we said, can they maintain for another 40 minutes? We're posing the same question to them today. Yeah, what about that tackle from Chev Walker that denied Kirk Yeoman? That oh, it's a huge effort. I think Chev's having a huge game for Leeds in attack as well as defence. But he's got Flirt and Clear, and, and Yeoman nine times out of ten will score these tries. But he's not taking any chance for it. He's got hold of the ball. There's nowhere that Yeoman and the ball are going over together there, and he gets help from the inside from Burrow. And this, again, is the right call from the video referee. But that's a special effort from Chev because Yeaman, as I said, nine times out of ten will score those tries. Now, things that Leeds are getting wrong, things that Leeds need to put right, should Keith Senior be out there for a start? Well, I've got to take my hat off to him, how brave he is in putting his hand up. But it's obvious, you watch any clips here in the game, and he's, uh, his ability to push up and accelerate, he can see now, you know, he's, uh, he's a bit of a one-legged man there. And, and the trouble is there, instead of taking the space and taking any gaps, he's trying to feed his winger because he doesn't have the ability to push off that, that ankle. It's inconvenienced him all week. And look, and the other thing that takes a lot out of you, all week he would have been in rehab trying to get the ankle right. You use a lot of energy for that, and now he's doing a focus on the game, and that drains you in a big game. So at the moment, I'd be very surprised if Keith can last 80 minutes. Very surprised. Did Hull exploit that channel enough during the, during the first half, the weakness of Keith Senior, do you feel? I think they're worrying less about that channel because what they recognise is Keith's not going to get his famous arsenal out, the big right, see you later in somebody's face and run. So what he's doing, because he's looking to ship the ball, they're coping with all their offensive players on the left-hand side a whole lot easier than they normally would. So I think that's a plus for Hull. So they're going to have to work out to find some threats out there on the left side. Or they're going to say to put the asset on Keith, say, right, we know you got through 40 minutes, your next 40, run or bust. So as a coach, what would you change for Leeds now, if anything? I think I'd look at their go forward. I think that they're using a lot of footwork on the whole team, which you would do because they're, they're renowned for being big, strong, and maybe not so agile, but they're coping with it at a whole. You know, and that we need a bit more go forward before they go to the fringes. They need to play a little bit more on the front foot. And they've made a few errors, which is uncharacteristic of Leeds, because they like to offload, because they like to promote the ball. They've thrown a lot of the ball down. And one of those enthusiasm indicators is the fact that Hull are getting all the 50-50 balls on the floor and they're finding the benefits. So they'll talk about, we need to get to the other end of the field where we know we can score points. I think one of the interesting things is when he's home, going to make a break, or Cook going to make a break, or Rayner, and for Leeds, when is Burrow going to get into the clear, or Maguire, or Dunaman, and some of these special players. As the game gets on and they get more tired, they're going to become more prevalent. Down there in the Hull dressing room, is John Keir working his magic once again? Well, what he'd be talking about here at the moment, Steve, he'd be talking about the process. The process has been fantastic in the first half. He'd be getting his front rowers together, the big men again, and saying, listen, I'm real proud of you. We're going to set our victory up of your go forward, so keep it up. But he'd be very, very important that he just talks about the process. Not that we're in front, not that we've, we've, we think we can win this. Reinforce the things they're doing well and then challenge the players and say, if you continue that, every minute, every ruck, every tackle, you can win this cup. Let's swiftly hear from Steve Crooks, the assistant coach of Hull. He's with Damien.
Who's going to win the happy with six all? Do you feel you could have gone in ahead? No, obviously, with a little bit of luck with the decision, we never could have got away with it. But uh, happy at 6 6. We think we've got a bit more to come and um, we'll, we'll be battling in there. What have you got to do in the second half to win it? I think we've got to do pretty much the same as what we've been doing. We know we can't take our, our eyes off the ball here. Obviously, a very important attacking weapon is Leeds, but so are we as well, and, and we hope to show that in the second half. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. So that clearly has been the message in the Hull dressing room. Stay patient, change little. Uh, the formula is working, the plan is working. Yeah, it is, and, th and that would reinforce a lot of these guys that they feel comfortable, that they second half, they understand what the first half was all about. The fear of the unknown is gone now for Hull. They've just got to stay with it. They've got to play the game of their lives. Steve Kearney will have a huge effect in the second half. He's their most experienced player, and they need to get him back on the field. He will lead them forward. But look, if, if you're a coach at the moment, you know, the scoreline's even. You know, there's going to be a little thing in the game that could turn either way. So concentration's vital, technique's vital. And like I said, if the process is good for Hull, stay with the current process. Kevin Sinfield bearing the battle scars already. What a wonderful Challenge Cup final this is. It's six points apiece. It's all to play for in the second half. We're back with Jonathan Davis and Ray French. Yes, as you say, uh, Steve, the destination of this uh, Power Gen uh, Challenge Cup still very, very much in doubt. Heading beyond the KC Stadium in uh, Hull. But a lot of good uh, points for both coaches to digest. Yeah, great, you know, for, for both sides, but um, the first point I'm going to pick up in the second half, I can't see Keith Senior out there. Definitely no Keith Senior. Um, um, you know, it all depends who plays the centre, no McKenna can play in the centre. You've got um, Caratelis who can play in the centre, and as Brian Noble said, you've got to have a threat going down the left-hand side. A lot of their players have come down the left-hand side, and there he is. So, you know, to... to for how they feel that they've nullified that in the first half, not because of their defensive work, well, or because of their yes, but because of the injury to Keith Senior. And I think he's given up. He realises they need more threat on that left hand side. Yes, as you can see, a huge disappointment for that Leeds and uh, Great Britain uh, centre. Not but to be, I'm it, afraid. It won't, you know, if Leeds win and whoever plays in, in the left centre scores a try, he'd be one of the happiest men in Leeds. So, um, I think you've just got to make a decision, not what's, you know, what's right for you, but what's, what's right for the team. Whatever, okay, Steve Ganson just uh, bringing the ball on, just checking with uh, video uh, referee Robert Connolly. But we're ready to be getting underway, and it's uh, Danny Brough, number 21, to get us underway. Sun now just uh, shining through a little now through the uh, heavy cloud that's been over here in the... Uh, past 20 minutes stadium uh, roof of course open uh, this year Second. and Leeds this Leeds pack really have to begin to get some momentum because Maguire Burrow even doing them there at half back you can't play Jonathan unless that pack's going forward no they've got to start taking those drives on making good yardage and you know making indentations into this hull defensive line and then with the odd offload too many players committed to the tackle that's when your Maguire's and Burrows come in into play but it'll, be the, it'll okay, be the same with Horn and Cook as well and uh, perhaps uh, Richard Duckyfield has got a little bit more news on the Keith Senior situation for us yes Ray uh, it might be a surprise too we don't think that Keith Senior is at all finished with this game yet. Second. We've had a word with the doctor. He said he's off as a precaution and that Keith Senior is back on the bench. Not, not looking too happy about it at the moment, but uh, he Third. could be back in this game Five for Leeds. Four, the drama continues, Jonathan. The drama continues. And so does the uh, pain down there for these forwards. Something's got to give it some time. Sooner or later, one of these halfbacks, a Richard Horn, a Maguire, a Burrow, or or Cook from okay, that midfield position has got to find a gap. Swain. 40. 40-20. Good chase by Tony. Oh, nice movement. Nice passing. And good support played out from by. Terrific run there from the Papua New Guinea. Great favourite. 
up with the Melbourne Storm in Australia. Such a big player, so strong. And a so run good. like that can inspire a team. Jones Buchanan. The one thing that Leeds haven't exploited okay, is because, okay, you know, Blacklock hasn't played full-back for how many times this season. He is defending very, very deep, but there's a big gap Come on. between the Hull defensive line and Blacklock. Rob Burrow, the little, Maguire. Little chip with a grubber, right? Five. Yeah. On the fifth tackle. Nice switch down the blind side. Sinfield! Now oh, then, was that ball knocked down by a whole player? Not so, says referee Ganson. Well, that's another knock-on that... Uh, Phil Bentham has missed, definite lock on. Well, we we'll have a look. Oh, yes, he was. On. Yep. Chester. Third. Come in, lads. Set back, Jamie. Almost 30 Jay. metres made off Come those uh, three tackles. Jay. That just tells you the impact of this uh, oh. whole pack of forwards. Here they are now. Down that left hand side. Good ball. Richard Horn. Oh, there was a, an overlap on the right hand side. Turnover. I don't think he realised no. that was the last tackle. Turnover. The players are certainly getting tired now. You can see it already in the body language yeah, here, Jonathan. The intensity of the first half, yep, especially the last the first few minutes of the second half. Second they're check. moving up but not as quickly in the tackle. Points will come. Third. Here. Very interesting how few penalties have been given in the game, despite the intensity of the uh, the forward work. Four, can you know? Poaching. That's a good ball. Sentry hesitant. Confess, Jonathan, I, I thought he'd, uh, he'd gone himself and spoiled the movement, but he didn't. He tried to, and he made sure the pass was over the shoulder. It was definitely back. And Gareth Rayner, well, he has to take it, and he takes it well. Definitely goes for the break. That's a, another great pass by Blacklock. Rayner scores. Good positioning, too, by the touch shows, Mr. Phil Bentham. Right on the spot. Gareth Rayner. Came back to Rugby League after a spell with the Leicester Rugby Union Tiger Club. Ruff again with a second from the touchline. And another beauty! Oh, tremendous success despite what appears to be a problem with the left of his back there. Come on, you hole! In the lead then, by 12 points to six. The favourites in trouble. Yeah. Too many numbers. By number 21, Danny Ruff. 
There's the reaction. John Keary, he can't believe it. Oh, now then, he, uh, <laughs> he didn't want to jump up and shriek, did he? The calm coach. But underneath, Jonathan, what will he be thinking now? Well, he will be upset with that. Well, the, he bounce, is. the bounce was very favourable to Leeds there. Uh, but, but how many times do you see that, Jonathan, that a team yeah. has scored and they relax? Yeah, you've got to try and take it on the full. Richard Horn wasn't in the, the best of positions. And now an opportunity for Leeds. Underneath it. Had very few chances this afternoon to dart and dodge him out as he normally does. But also when he when he does those, you know, the crabbing runs across the field, there hasn't been many runners giving him an option. No. Leeds will want to score quickly. Ali Nawatiti. McKenna, who looks to be filling that to left centre row, has played centre from Australia even. Numbers on the right for Leeds. Maguire, out to Sinfield. Mathers. But again, this uh, whole defence is fierce. Back of the ball's come back to knock on. Oh, is he saying the ball was ripped out? Yes, he is. Good connection with the touch judge on the far side now, Mr. Phil Bentham. Now then, what will Kevin Sinfield do? Is he going to go for goal or is he going to take a tap? Okay. No, he's taking the tap. Willie Poaching drives it in, nine metres then from nice. this whole line. Jamie! Big tackle once again. Second. Duneman. Sinfield. Sinfield sliding through, can he get it in? Yes, he can! Sinfield has been magnificent. The first attempt is definitely held up. Can you hear me, boys? It all depends. Oh, can you hear me? Down. Does he go down can there? You hear me, it's definitely down. You can hear me. This is now a decision for Robert Connolly. The ball is definitely down. Is it immediately or not? What is it? That's the call of Robert Connolly. Well, I don't think, I don't think it's a double movement or anything like that. I think uh, Danny Ward realises in the crook of his arm there and he's just trying to place it down. I think he gets his down there. But again, it's terrific tackling. Great defence once again. I, I, would, I would feel to give that. I think you've got to give benefit to the attack inside and I would give that. This where it goes down. It's very difficult, isn't it? The ball, I've seen the ball eventually on the ground. I don't think anyone in the ground knows that the leads are quiet, fans are quiet, the half fans are quiet. It looks, it looks to me as if it's gone down. I would, I would give yeah. it. Well, I was chatting to uh, Robert Collin this morning. He said, if you've got to give them, you've got to give them and uh, forget the consequences. Here it is to try. <laughs> A roar for 20,000 miles. Conversions of the touchline for Danny Brown, you know, superb kicks. Danny Ward! And I'm sure it's Dan David who uh, was a proud skipper of this lead side in a Challenge Cup win way back against St Helens in the 70s. He'd be thrilled with that. Now then, can Sinfield level the scores?
normally an easy kick for a man of Sinfield's ability, but before a 74,000-plus crowd, the pressure is on. The pressure is off, the two points in there, we're back, all square again. All 12, needs 12, this is how it came. Yeah, superb try. Kevin Sinfield throws at Debbie once again. Just goes in between two players. Ward is there, good support, that's a try. This is the post cam, throws the dummy. I think Sinfield has been superb. First! Back here, hold. And there has been substitutions for Hyde FC. Second! Pass it up, mate! Dunaman. Beginning to move and, and dart around that to uh, play the ball here. That's what he's going to do. He's going to bring two or three whole players on him before he slips that ball. Sinfield. Oh, that's ball back. Kevin Sinfield, I'm sure, looking for a 40-20 kick there, just puts the ball direct into touch, without the bounce, so that's ball back. Yeah, good idea, you know, get the kick in early, head put the scrum. pressure on. Head and scrum to Hull. Come on, lads. OK, will they lock in? Richard Horn to Rob feed of the scrum. Bruff again, assuming that loose forward roll. Stephen Kearney. Second hole. Let's go. You and Dows. Third. Again, another Third. former Leeds Rhinos player in the whole ranks. Richard Hall. This is threatening again. Good ball from Cook. Here's a chance to line again. Blackmore going off. Oh, he's just an all short. Again, good tackling out wide. He definitely knows where the trail line is, black yes. Kirk Yeaman trying to force his way over there. They've got an overlap down this right-hand side. The kick! Well picked up. Oh, what has he done? He's torn the ball to Richard White the score! What a disaster! And easy try. Just watch. It's very good play by Pai. He flicks the ball out to Mathers. Whitey reads the play. Easily scores. Just watch it. But, but why do that, Jonathan? The play has stopped. The momentum stopped. Well, he just he just thought if I can get it to Mathers, they can get it to the, the in goal area and we can get on with it. Rather than okay, taking a tackle, that is okay, a huge so. mistake. Oh. Massive mistake. And, and, and I don't think uh, Richard Whiting could hardly believe what happened, but all credit to that uh, whole player. He was on the spot and he took advantage of it. And all credit to Danny Maguire there, having a word with Marcus Bai. And the lead side. Come on, boys. What with penalty tries and tries like that, this Challenge Cup final's full of incidents. Another one there from Danny Brook. Three from three. And hold. Back again. 18 12. You can see McKenna rushes out to the line. So there's a gap there. The bounce favours lead and bite it extremely well. Until that moment where he throws the silly pass. Can't believe it, Whiting. Well, you. You're playing in a Challenge Cup final, aren't you? You're not, you're not playing in your mate's backyard, you know, I mean... You just can't come to terms with a, with a pass like and that there's a big mistake, line. big mistake! Leeds have got the ball! Steel. It's all action here at, at the Millennium Stadium! Good play by Bailey! Six points to difference! Ali Lauertiti driving down the left! Maguire! 
Duneman. Duneman trying to make space. Oh, that's a high tackle. Wasn't, wasn't a malicious tackle. No. Around the neck, just watch him. He knows he bounces off the ball first. Sinfield taking a quick tap. Three metres now oh. from that line. Oh! Leeds try to take the... Clear the ball too quickly. Lose the opportunity. Hull come driving back. Here in the shape Second. of Paul King. Stephen Kearney. Meets fierce resistance from Ward. Having a very good game is uh, Ward in the front row. Another man here too. Ewan Dowd, and that's the high tackle. Suddenly, tempers rise. And is he worth a shot at goal? I think it is. I think this is uh, Yeaman's run out of defence. The least player said he locked it on. Well, I thought he did as well, lost oh. control. Now, we've just seen a kick like that. Why is it the modern player, you know, you tell me, doesn't go for a goal? Two points there, it means that Leeds have to score twice. Well, I would have gone for goal, but also, if you don't go for goal, you just make sure that it goes... Ooh, that'll go straight in as well. You should have let that go as well, Tony. <laughs> There's a few mistakes creeping into this game now. Yeah, Paul lucky to get the ball back there. I Stephen Kearney trying to use all his experience in a New Zealand uh, test shirt. Someone on either Leeds or Hull side have just got to put their foot on the ball, pick their heads up and assess what's going on. A bit of control is needed by certain members of the side. Both sides moving the ball now from wing to wing. Swain. Richard Horn again. To Cook, Cook, back inside to Stephen Kearney. Just can't get it away on the last tackle. Rough, left footed drop. Mr. Ganson's just checking with the touch judge in his start. And Danny Brook, a one pointer for Hull. What an influence this former York City Knights lads having on this game. Two years ago, as I said, in the National League 2, here now, looking for glory. Good decision. Play on, but, uh, well, it was well intended, well uh, thought out by Kevin Sinfield. He had to wait for that ball to go 10 metres, but uh, Hull came up with it. well to keep hold of that ball did uh, Paul King Ewan Dowes John Keir has worked these prop forwards very very well from on and off the replacements bench the half forwards have been superb absolutely superb that's the that's the turnover well, in, in rugby league, it's important to complete your sets, but coach after coach will emphasize the importance of completing the set after you score. Hull scored through Garrett Rayner, and they failed to deal with the Leeds kickoff. That resulted in Leeds scoring a try through Danny Ward. In the very next set, Kevin Sealbeal kicked the ball out on the full, and subsequently Hull have scored. So we've seen mistakes after, after tries have been scored by the scoring team, which will really, really upset these coaches. That one-point drop goal there from uh, Danny Brough making a tremendous difference for this uh, Challenge Cup final. Leeds know now they've got to score twice. They really have to move this ball around. Maguire. Neither Maguire or Burrow been able to stamp themselves on this game. Duneman. Well taken. Of the ball must have his feet on the ground when you win for a tackle. And I think the Leeds uh, defenders know that. Just coming up to the final quarter of this match. 
Tony Smith, a worried man. He just lost their composure a little bit, Leeds, haven't he? Just, Leeds have just lost their composure. Well, look, there's no platform being provided for Leeds in midfield for these two half-backs, who are gifted half-backs to run. I just think that, uh, you know, we haven't been allowed to uh, lay a platform. Yeah. Still a few more scores to come, I think. Well, if Hulls go next, pressure will be on. Swain doing a wonderful job down the middle. Inspirational Coming captain, down. Stephen Kearney. These two uh, Kiwis in particular, and Motu Tony, of course. Paul always had a Kiwi contact. Short save. Coming down that left hand side. Pretty sure he is short, but he's only just short. He's Yeoman. Blacklock with a little kick and chase. And that's better. He may have been tackled in the end goal earlier, but he hasn't thrown the ball away. watch three men into the tackle his leg his foot just gets caught underneath there's a hunger about this whole side now they're looking to finish the rhino off here they are now driving again first swain kearney i was only saying what a Second. kiwi connection of all have had i remember the Deeds of the likes of Dane O'Hara, Fred Coy, Gary Campbell, Lou Lawai, all in their last uh, cup campaign in the early 80s. And the Kiwis are doing it for Hull again. Can Leeds get out of this grip? Didn't, Zero. didn't need the pu to push the pass there. This is where they want to be, Hull. First. That's good, man. Slowly but surely, Leeds moving away from their, uh, their try line. Just made the half. But they're playing that ball ever so slowly. Good work from Hull, keeping them down there. And good tackling from Yeaman, what a good defensive centre. Sinfield. Wall. I just feel they're like very, very flat, too shallow. Maguire back to Ward again. And that symptomatic of this uh, lead side, they really are strangling here. But there's a chance. Corner looks going for it. No, the ball is dead. There's a bit of argy bargy there between uh, Marcus Serpai. Uh, and uh, Motu Tony, but I think, uh, Jonathan, those last two played the balls, Leeds, First. they haven't a clue what, what to do time. with the ball, and that last kick, it just showed the pressure that Hull were putting on them in midfield. Well, I do feel sorry for Clark, Sinfield and Burrows, there is no platform there, and like you said, First. there is no second line of attack, there is one line, and it's very, very flat. But Leeds have sufficient talent in this side. Sufficient try scoring ability to pull okay, this game out of the bag. Coming up, no, 16 fast, minutes boys. remaining. Seven points the difference. Okay, Alan. And uh, just while we've got a, a lull in play there, Richard, some news. Well, the walls are piling up really for the Rhinos, aren't they? Chris McKenna's back on the bench here. Uh, he's obviously in some pain replaced by Lautiti. Uh, you wonder what leads have got to conjure up the bench. I suppose Rob Burrow is there shading his eyes, watching the low center. And here is the This is first lapse in contact. 
Jason. From a scrum, he just grabs and grabs and That's grabs. Miss tackle, black lock, and he's away. Two, it's as simple as that. It's one missed tackle. He gets through the defensive line. And no one catches him. Just watch. Takes the ball. Just drifts and drifts. Blacklock goes high, misses him, and he's away. Brings him back into the game. Hey lads, it's effort now, 13 minutes. Play two, Phil. Water and arrest the Collingwood. The pressure on the skipper. And he's up to it. Six more points for Leeds then. And suddenly, we're in a cauldron here in the Millennium Stadium. The Danny Brook dropped all the difference. 19 points to 18. The Hull. Very few men will catch him when he's away. There he is. There's really nothing on there, is it? Slips the tackle and he's away. <laughs> Blacklock won't be happy with that. Now then, I wonder, Jonathan, will that man come on or will he stay off? Will there be one last throw of the dice with him? Second, Come on, what oh, do you no. think? I'm not really sure yet. I don't want to think. <laughs> well, I don't know what to think about this game. It's certainly going either way. And one or two mistakes are coming now. A lot of tired people out there. As we said, Leeds have some skillful players. None more so than this man, Ali Lawatiti. Back to six as That's well. On. Back to six more tackles. Six more tackles. Ward. Very rarely to prop forwards get the man of the match, but he'd be one of my contenders. Yeah. He's had a terrific match. Well, you could pick anybody from the from the Hull pack. Sitfield in for some rough treatment. Diskin, Iron Bailey. The Leeds pack beginning to gain in confidence now. That's a good move by Diskin. And suddenly the pressure is all on the men from East Yorkshire there in Hull. Dunaman. Walk, can't get away, can't get the ball away either. Five. On the last tackle. They've gone too wide for a drop goal. Matters. A chance again. By to McGee himself! Executed kick and how to redeem yourself. He gets higher than Tony and he is going under the sticks. And what a reaction! What relief for Marcus Pye. But put that down to the Leeds forwards. When they had a repeat set of six, Ward went up, Bailey went up. They got a great field position and that is their reward. He's only. Uh, Five foot nine is this little man from the uh, Papua New Guinea, former Port Moresby Vipers. But didn't he soar in the earth, Jonathan? No problem whatsoever. Need a few stitches tonight. It's all about timing. And there's his reaction. And I think it's relief as well, having given that try away earlier on. Yes. Definite relief. Sinfield. Taking his time. Three out of three. Over 1,142 <laughs> points prior to this game. Prolific scorer. Two more. And suddenly, for the first time since that ninth minute penalty try, leads in the lead. And no Hull will have to 
change the tactics, I feel. You know, you're into the last 10. And they've got to go to try and win this game now. Well, we have seen uh, Paul Pierce their wins on a pack, but uh, Jonathan, they're not as dour a side as many people think. They do score a lot of tries. They've averaged uh, 35 points a match in this Challenge Cup run. Six tries a game. They've got plenty of talent. Well, there's no denying that, but I don't think they've been in this position. Just five points the difference. A try and a goal. Oof. Leeds know that nothing is secure yet with a scoreline like that. Gareth Ellis. Terrific entertainment here in this, this cup tie. And uh, I wonder what Ian Millward's thinking there now. Oh, I wouldn't like to be the coach at the moment, right? <laughs> be biting me nails. Because uh, they won the first 20 minutes after half time here. Another kick. It's been a kickathon. All the points have come from kicks just about in this game. But, uh, you know, they won the first 20 minutes after half time hole. Over the last 10 minutes, they've won at Leeds. It's probably what Brian Abel was just saying to me here. Which team's got the most belief and go on with it? Because they've had an energy surge through these two tries, the Leeds Rhinos. Can the whole team get that surge to get across the try line? Just less than 10 minutes remaining. Where will this Power Gen Challenge Cup trophy, this famous silver trophy, first played for way back in 1896? Where will it reside for the next 12 months? Hull or Leeds? Richard Hall. Again, the kickathon continues. Marcus by. Oh, and he passes it again. I think Richard Mathers will, will check into the Red Cross stamp on that ball, John. Well, I know. Well, he was in the field of play then, so that was one bonus. I still wouldn't have passed it. That might have been a forward, though. Titi, beautiful ball. Great ball. And Maguire just couldn't get away. That was a good tackle by Richard Swain. He's lost his head guard. Ward again. Ball. Had to be made that tackle. Leeds seem to be gaining in confidence. Duneman. This is where they're getting tired now. Duneman. Burrow is warming up. Will he see him again? Sinfield. Oh. Little stub of a kick. Puts it. Hull on the back foot, good recovery though. It's another pass. Blacklock. <laughs> well, Hull have got to get some points back on the board now, haven't they? Coming up for eight minutes remaining. Needs a huge effort now from these uh, pull forwards to take the ball up here. Good run there from Jamie Thackeray. But we're on the fifth tackle. Oh, and Diskin traps the ball, soccer style. It was a good ploy there. Horn is going to put the kick in behind the play of the ball. And Blacklock was flying to get it. Second. Leeds, you wonder, are caught in two. Uh, Attitudes, are they? Do they play a sort of a what we have we hold, Jonathan, or have they got to go for another try? I think they're going to go for another try. Yep. I think they have, that's the way they've played all season. They're very confident in their own ability, especially offensively. They will look to close this game. Mathers. Sinfield. Duneman again, he's been very, very instrumental. Oh, he's a chance! It's still anybody's there! No. Touch judge, Mr. Bentham, right on the spot again. A battle there <laughs> with uh, Calderwood and Blacklock. I'd, I'd have gone for a field goal there. Six points. First. Do you know when you've made that six points? Uh, I would have had a go at drop goal, yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Swain. At least you're safe then, we know, for the draw with seven answer. minutes to go.
Good carrying of the ball again by Thackeray. All his Making forwards a... must be out on their feet, Ray. Cook, beautiful ball. Oh, superb slip of a pass down there, but that was good cover tackling by Sinfield. Great ball, Newman just overrun it a little bit. Either of these two sides can still win this game. It needs one try and a goal to clinch it either way. Five. Richard Horn, Cook. Five. Well, he's six foot five, his ball Cook. He managed to get that ball back, but he's put Ruff in trouble. That's a lovely kick once again, superb kick. Yes, Mathis can't leave it, he's got to bring it out. Third. Just over five oh, minutes yeah. remaining here, five points the difference. Leeds desperate to retain Second possession lads, here. Come on. Nice and calm. The 20,000 nice plus whole fans roaring them on. Can they get back in this game? They've had on, leads, Carl, had leads on the back foot all the way through this game. This game. Sinfield been inspirational, he's kept plugging away in the middle when times were bad for Leeds. I think, yeah, you know, it's, it's a very difficult Five. choice for the press today for the last time man of the match. But I think, you know, any of the half forwards could win it. But I feel Sinfield has been absolutely magnificent for Leeds. You know, he's battered, he's bruised, he's cut. You know, he's, he's took the ball on. And as I look around this pitch, Jonathan, yes. so many of these lads are almost walking. But They've given every ounce of energy. There will be another try, I feel. I definitely think it'll be another Second. try. People well, are tired. It'll be in four minutes. What's all that's remaining here? 24 points to Leeds, all 19. Third. One last desperate effort, surely, coming from Hull. They've got to take the ball off. They've got to get within striking range. Richard Hall, that's a good run. On the fifth tackle. Will we see a high towering kick? No, not, they're running it. They can rub it. Oh, the pressure's still on. That's another six. Oh, another six tackles to, uh, to Hull. Now then, can they snatch the Challenge Cup here from Leeds Grass? Five remaining, ten metres from the line. Richard Hall swings him back to the left. The stage of out here, Cook's going through! He's got the lead, the pass! is no easy kick. Memories of that famous one from Don Fox way back when Wakefield Trinity were looking for success over Leeds. Here is Danny Brock. He kicks it! The two points are there! The seconds are counting down! Is that challenge cut? To hold courtesy. This is this. the mistake. It's not really a mistake, it's a very, very good kick. He gets the ball, then unless they get the ball, but a great change of direction. And as the ball comes back, just watch this guy here, stop it there. There's the guy, he's gonna walk through there, and he's away. He's not Tom. Now then, the drama isn't over. There's one last chance here to lead. 
It's another six tackles. One point the difference. Will somebody go for a drop goal and make uh, make a draw, Jonathan? They've got to set the, the drop goal up, I think. There's got to be great length on this drop out. This is the mistake once again. Ball goes down. And again, they haven't taken it on the full. Knock on, knock back. Gone dead. And that is a very good kick. Great it kick. Puts leads back something like 60 metres. Willie really Porting knows what he's got to do. He's got to drive it forward. 60 seconds remaining. Got to the go last, for the field goal. The last six tackles of the match. They've got to go into the middle. Got to go midfield. They've got, got to, to go find midfield. Sinfrey, free Law Maguire for the drop goal. Willie Poaching. Terrific run. They've got to go two more drives midfield, Ray. Who will take it? Maguire. Oh, it should have been a forward, surely. I think this is the opportunity for Sinfield. He's having a go. Oh, it's charged down. Holland got the ball. That surely will be the last effort. They the went too chance. early. They went too early for the drop goal, Ray. There's no way they should have done that. Well, he had a lot of space, Jonathan, Two. but to all credit to Hull, they got up there. They'll just hold this ball. Penalty. They're waiting for the countdown. The hoot has gone. It's all And Hull are the winners. And Joe Keane is flat on his back. He's planned this for a long, long time. He did it with Sheffield Eagles against all the odds against Wigan. And Tony Smith, the Leeds Rhinos uh, coach. But the game is not over. We have to restart. Apparently, the Hooter could not go. Whilst Just Mr. Ganson is good. having a word. They have played on. It's all over. He ran the ball immediately to touch. And it's all over now. What drama. He might not have had the magnificent flowing rugby but it has had drama the likes of which I've not seen for the many many a year in the Challenge Cup we mentioned about the game breakers coming into their own and they just changed direction Horn fed Cook Ward was quite uh, was tired through the dummy and he went Well, wonderful uh, effort. Four tries apiece, including a, a penalty try. And I think we've got John Keir down there on the touchline. John Keir, you've done it again. You've done it again. What's your secret, John? The secrets. Working with a great bunch of fellas. We'll get out there and give the absolute child week in, week out. And this has been building from November. They deserve every all the plaudits. They've been magnificent, and I'm a little excited. Did you think it was gone when Marcus Pye went over towards the end for Leeds? It's never over till the fat lady sings, let's use all the cliches, because we've won it. Danny Bruffs with us, how tense were you on that final uh, goal kick? I was tense, I just didn't want to mess up for boys, but today we stuck together, we've had his belief, we've had all his meetings, and we finally knew we'd win today. That's belief from all the lads, the coaching staff and everything. You had a, a game plan and you just stuck to it, you stifled Leeds out of the game, didn't give them a platform. Yeah, we did. We're just panicking a bit at the end there when Marcus went over. But it's about belief again, like I say. I think we stuck in there and we did real well. Just a word about these fans have been terrific for you. Oh, mate, semi-final, any game you go to with these fans. All fans home and away, they're always there chanting and willing us on. Congratulations, Danny. Go and enjoy. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Well, we talked beforehand to Kath Everington and to her husband, Gary, who is with the Leeds team. You have finally done it with Hal. Fantastic place, all I've ever wanted. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And have you seen your husband yet and rubbed it in? Uh, to be honest, I, I, I forgot about my husband. I, 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 we played fantastic, it's been a fantastic game, fantastic advert for the game. And it looked, I mean, until the last three minutes, it looked like Leeds were going to win it. Yeah, but we never say die. And uh, obviously, our name's been on that cup. Well, it's the most fabulous atmosphere down here. I, I, Kath, I'll let you go and enjoy it with the players. Well done, well done.
Matu Tony, what a way to win a Challenge Cup final. Yeah, it was a great atmosphere today, and uh, the boys done well to come back after Leeds got this end of this in the late in the second half. It was ever so tense. Were you expecting it to be close? Yeah, we knew it was going to be a tight game. Um, you know, we haven't got the stars that Leeds have got, so we've got to play them in arm wrestle sort of game. Will the folks be watching back home down under? Yep, my folks are watching back home in New Zealand. I love you, Mum and Dad. Thanks very much, Matu. Uh, Richard Swain's here, the uh, Hull captain. Richard, a very proud moment in your career. No, very proud. One of the one of the best moments of my life, actually. Uh, we had control of the game, and then we get kept turning over too much silly ball. And they came back into the game like a great team they are. And uh, you know, Paul Cook pulled something out of the bag at the end to get us through. Did you feel that you were running out of gas when Marcus Bay went over for that late try? It looked like you'd thrown it away. Oh, I knew if we could just complete our sets, we'd get back in there. And a, a nice little kick by Shane McManamy up there, and I think Paul would uh, spill it. So, you know, we just built, built some momentum around that. Thousands of Hull fans here to see you. Big party tonight. Oh, massive. No, they've been fantastic. Great atmosphere here today. Thanks, Richard. Thank you. Astonishing stuff. Pandemonium in the Millennium Stadium after one of the best Challenge Cup finals that Cardiff has ever seen. One of the best Challenge Cup finals the game has ever seen. And we'll get the reaction of Brian and uh, also Ian Millward, Marcus By, what kind of emotions has he experienced in the last hour or so? Let's hear from him. Marcus, uh, a dramatic, controversial, a classic game, but did you think you'd won it with that try? No, well, you know, I thought I won it for the boys tonight. I, I made one mistake there and um, uh, maybe they scored two tries from there. And um, yeah, you know, I thought, I thought it was a winning try, you know, and still we got a uh, couple of minutes to go and, uh, you know, they just kept coming back and you now good on them judging by your reaction after you scored the try it looked as though you'd made up for the mistake that you made really yeah i thought you know exactly right i i, I thought i made up for the mistake and i think for credit to mark Calderwood who, who got us back into it and then uh, i sort of scored a winning try but you know it's always the case and you, know, you, you have to fight till 80 minutes so they did it, did it today and uh, they just have to win it's the narrowest of defeats i expect that's no consolation yeah, it is, you know, you know, we just got to bounce back again next week now and uh, pretty disappointing for us, but, you know, we still got a long way to go. So Thanks, Marcus. Well played. Thank Thanks. you. What a performance. What a match. And the reaction of the Hull coach, John Keir, on the final whistle. Just look at this. The whistle 